Hey, it's Sasha Avdikov. It's March 13th, 2014, Thursday, and today we're going to do the market recap. Again, I apologize for the microphone if you have trouble hearing me, so I'm going to try to speak up. Uh, I'm still not at my desk. We're still in Canada taking it easy, enjoying the holidays here, and there's some snow. Got a chance to do some skating and some uh, tubing over here in the snow, so fantastic, great weather for that type of stuff. Uh, in either case, if you ordered some courses from me or the website, then uh, don't worry. I have my uh, assistant uh, ship those out for you as well. So they'll be there shortly. I know a couple of you guys ordered some stuff, and uh, don't worry. It's on its way. Uh, with that being said, let's take a look at the market. And it's a fantastic day to do the recap because there's a 231-point drop. Now, some of the things that I want to mention about the 200 point drop is that one day doesn't make a trend. However, we have been kind of rolling over here uh, slightly over the last few days. But if we take a look at the monthly, in the realm of things, we're still on an upward trend and moving higher. Now, what concerns me a little bit on this upward trend is if we take a look at the diamonds, and I like the diamonds because they have more volume to look at is this trend line of descending volume um, as we're going up. We're deteriorating on volume, and I don't care how you look at it, whether you look at it this way or you take it all the way to the top or highs. Uh, we're declining in volume as we're reaching higher. What we should be doing is as we're moving up, this volume should be going to the upside like this. Uh, but it's not doing that, so I don't like the health of that. But uh, that doesn't mean you can't trade it. It just means you have to be careful and be prepared for these kinds of pullbacks, which I mentioned in my last recap. If you watch that, you'll know I talked about the market going up on air, and that's what it was doing. And uh, this is what happens when the market goes up on air. When you have no volume or juice, these things happen fast because there's not a lot of people to buy into these positions. Uh, people are all over the place, and that's kind of what happens. So that's the problem uh, with these markets that go up on air. So just be careful. Like I said, it doesn't mean you can't trade them. With that being said, the 231-point drop, um, you know, it's testing this level. We have three main points that it's touching right now. One here on December 9th. We got another one over uh, here which is the 3-3-2014, uh, three, 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 and we got one right now. And uh, if we go back to the diamonds, the same pattern is created. Like I said, I like the diamonds better in terms of volume because you really get to see it. So here, looking at this volume right here, over the last few days, we have been going negative or it's been playing to the negative side. And you can see that on 310, we were, went down on 4 million shares. On um, 311, here we went down on 5.2 million, then 5.3 million. So it's been increasing. So look at it 4 million, 5.2, 5.3, 9.8. So we got 10 million shares now in the diamonds that went down today. That's fast. That's pretty quick, so it's nearly double. So it's increasing in volume here to the downside. Now, if we break this level at the 1600 right here, uh, we should be able to go down and test. The first point would be right around the halfway mark, which is the 15,800 or even the 15,347 uh, area. So we could test those two points if we start heading lower uh, past this line, but we could see a bounce tomorrow, a pop to retest the highs over here. And I'm not saying it'll do it in one day. I'm saying that it, they could run it higher to test this level right there, and then it could roll back over. Uh, that's how the markets move. That's what they do. They don't go straight down. So sometimes they do, but normally they like to bounce, retest things, and then they'll roll over. So if we do see a continuation tomorrow, because it is Friday, and sometimes on Friday people don't like to hold positions, 
Um, you know, who knows what kind of sell-off we'll get, but um, usually it, it would then take a few days to get the halfway point, which is a 50%, somewhere around that 1580 and or 15,800. And then also if it continues below that, this uh, 15,350 area. So those are a few levels I'm watching in the Dow, the S&P kind of the same way. Now, what I want to mention is that I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and even in the last recap, that things are going up on air and things are, um, you know, they're not looking right. And why did I mention this? Why did I say this? And I said it because things like the Apple, the Amazons, the uh, Priceline, the Netflix, they all started to roll over a few days earlier. And when these leading stocks, uh, like the price lines, start rolling over before a lot of the other stocks, because we had the um, small caps going up higher, even when the other stocks were rolling over, the small caps typically follow those leaders. The leaders are those um, price lines, the Googles, the Netflix, the Apples, the, those kinds of stocks. The small caps usually follow those stocks a few days later. It could be a week later. It could be a month later. But they follow them because the other companies are more liquid. They're the ones that lead the market higher. Think about it if you have a huge uh, cargo van and you're going to try to pack 50 people in there. And uh, you're a whole bunch of college students. And who wants to go first? Who wants to get in the car first? Who wants to call shotgun? They want to get in there as quick as possible because they want the shotgun. And the same thing here is, you know, who's got shotgun? Well, it's the Apples, the Netflix, the Googles, those types of stocks. They got the shotgun. So they're going to try to either buy those first. So if the market's going up, those stocks like the Apples, Netflix, Googles will go up first. And if they're going to sell the stocks, those stocks will sell first. So that's how I noticed that Apple was rolling over. I talked about the price line rolling over. I talked about the Google. Something wasn't acting right. They're rolling over. You know, we can still bounce here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying watch those companies, and I'm giving you some insight. Think about what's being said. What does it mean, or what does it mean to you? How can you use it to increase your trading? Now, in this price level, we can still bounce. We can still go higher. Uh, but I'm just saying that these are some signals to watch for, and we are going on higher volume now to the downside. So we'll see tomorrow, Friday. One day doesn't make a trend. This was a pretty uh, bearish engulfing pattern. You see, we went up. We took it lower. If you take a look at Amazon, you know, they tried to take it higher. I tweeted about this. Check my Twitter account. I tweeted about this. And, you know, the, I said that we had two gaps here. We got one here, and we got one over here. And, uh, you know, tried to take it higher, but then it just pulled it lower. There wasn't enough juice. There's more bearish. What does that mean? A stock goes higher and then it comes back. That means there's negativity and they want to take it lower. So that's what happened. That's what they did. Uh, you know, so uh, let me go over some other stocks. So that way, uh, you know, if you're trading or looking at these stocks, I didn't get many requests. So. I'll go over some of the things I've been watching and uh, talk about Apple uh, here. I was watching this trend line right here. Uh, this trend line, I knew this trend line was created for a few different reasons. It hit multiple lines, multiple points. I also know that this doji right here created with the candlesticks and it took it lower. So I figured that somewhere around this level, the stock would reverse, of course, and there it did. Uh, this is one I was watching. I tweeted about Visa yesterday. In fact, let me see if I can pull that up. Right here, I tweeted on Visa and uh, I mentioned that. I said, you know, this could be a short opportunity if it breaks this triangle right here. Showed you the triangle exactly right there before it broke out. It was at 225 at that level. And now when we're looking at it, you know, it's 220, you know, so you had five point run. I don't need to tweet, uh, toot my own horn, but just something to pay attention to and just watch these things and how they apply to you. You don't have to trade everything I tweet. Just learn from them. OK, 
Okay, so the visa was uh, setting up for the short opportunity. We had a doji here. Let me take this off. We had a doji here the previous day. Again, uh, we had some resistance here at this point. So this was kind of creating its um, short opportunity. And with the market going negative, it really helped accelerate the move. Uh, Netflix here, uh, movie stock. Took a look at it here. We were, had this resistance level. Uh, Netflix likes to do these stair step patterns. It's been doing it for years. So as it does these stair step patterns, you can use them as support and resistance. So you can see that. Okay. So you can see that right here we have a stair step pattern as the stock's going up. And if we draw these out further, you know, you get to see that. Uh, it's coming into this next stair step pattern. And this stock just creates the stair step patterns all the time. Uh, it did it back here and it's doing it now as well. Uh, so again, this is a leader stock. It was rolling over, uh, you know, just another one that if it breaks this level, then I expect it to get to um, this next level. So that's how I play these stocks um, is I watch these different price levels. Obviously, I don't have this, this amount of trend lines or th this many trend lines. It's just these are the uh, this is the method that I use just because they come into these types of bars and they stair step. So they stair step up, they stair step down as well. It's just well, on the downside, they're much quicker to the downside. So uh, that was Netflix. Uh, taking a look at Facebook again, the same thing. We got some resistance right here that it came into. Uh, it's pulling back lower, probably will test the 66.20 soon. Uh, could be a good price level to watch it or purchase some shares uh, if you miss the move and if you're bullish on the stock. But, you know, don't get married to the stock just because it's Facebook, just because it's Netflix or, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, just because it's Visa. Don't get married to the stock. You know, I don't care if it trades uh, apples or fruit. Um, you know, I care about the movement and the price action, the volume, the behavior, how it's acting, how it's reacting, and my trade and position. Don't care what the stock does. You know, don't get too attached just because it has the Facebook name. Read it how the tape is playing it and how other people are playing it. Okay, BAC. I uh, talked about this one as it broke. Uh, we're creating possibly another opportunity here. This would be our bear flag here or a bull flag. So if it comes down and it holds this 17 and we pop out higher, it could continue further into strength. So this is healthy for a stock like this. You know, we had huge volume. Bank of America trades a lot of shares, 207 million shares traded here on this breakout. Um, and when you see a stock moving like this, you know, it takes a lot of money to move that. Just think about it. 207 million shares. Multiply that times $17. I mean, that's billions of dollars in one day that got poured in. Uh, so the same thing here. Um, you know, we got this pattern that's being created. If it pops higher, we could see further upside. But for now, the market's not as healthy. So watch the market then also watch your stock and then watch its action. That's how you go about it. CMG. We had, uh, you know, this break as well, kind of like in Bank of America. We had a break, pop, it's retracing. What CMG will probably and likely do is it'll test this level and then it'll bounce and come higher. But I'm going to guess it'll come back to this area at 565 and then possibly move back higher, depending on the action and how it goes. Because Right now, it's moving um, on lower volume here on 283,000 shares, but the break was at 1 million shares. So, you know, this is healthy. It's okay. It's normal. It is a little bit of a larger pullback, again, because of the market. Fundamentals don't apply when a market goes down very fast, very quick. It comes down to technicals, and right now, the technicals in this stock are doing okay and pretty good. Um, you know, in the market right now, everybody's kind of selling. So uh, with this one, if it holds here and the market bounces, then it'll probably bounce around that level if it starts retreating. Talked about HLF a few days ago. Um, 
yesterday it had a halt and I said that it'll probably break this line so you know if you were short on this one good job congratulations take a little off uh, the table because these stocks like to do a little bounce and come back and retest things so it might come back and retest the $60 level uh, but in either case we went lower and, uh, you know, I, the reason I chose this line was one, two, three, four. We had four or five points that it was hitting here. It continued lower on heavy, heavy volume. And then looking at it here, where can it go? Where can this stock go? And I'm looking at it. And look, we're in this bar over here. We can go up to around 45. Uh, if it continues, I mean, we can see right around this uh, 42 level. So uh, be careful on this stock. It could bounce around 50, test the 60, and roll back over to the 42. That's how these stocks move. Amazon, we talked about Amazon. I uh, mentioned it that, you know, they wanted to take it higher. We had two gaps. Filled back that gap. Took it lower. Uh, Tesla, uh, it's pulling back into this level. When there's a gap, there's a gravitational pull towards it. This is what happens. And add that with the market. You know, you'll still get that pull. You'll get that test. And, uh, you know, it's still coming back to this gap right now. Will it fill it? I don't know. We'll see if it gets into the gap. It might hold this level and bounce and, um, and we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm still a little more negative because of this gap on this stock. And once it fills it, it could continue higher. Uh, the stock has had a huge monster run over the last year, so it's pretty much um, a valued, overvalued, in my opinion. But you never know. You, it could continue running longer than you expect. GMCR, I've been short for quite some time. Um, check the Twitter post. I mentioned that uh, some of these bounces were actually reshorting opportunities. Uh, where do I think this stock can go? I think it'll probably go and test this 100 level. Uh, you know, you take half off, some of your shares off. When it comes back, you know, right around there, you know, 10 points from the from the uh, 124 area to 110, you know, you'd get out half of your position or so. You get out a little bit, and that way if it goes back to 115, you know, that's your stop. If you're just now entering this, you know, today, you know, you might take 10%, 20% of your position off to reduce your risk. I'm still predicting and holding that this will probably get to about 100. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, I'll definitely be out by the time it hits this uh, 115, 116 level. So, uh, you know, you got to trade accordingly. I've been in it for a couple weeks now, and uh, that's kind of the one I've been watching. Uh, Priceline mentioned that, yeah, it's rolling over right here. This stock from its breaking point had a 220-point uh, run. That's monster. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it came back here to the 1266 level, right where we had that Dragonfly Doji right there. Uh, some of the things that you do trade in this type of market. Now, those are some of the stocks I've been looking at watching closely. Uh, there's some others. Uh, that you might trade, such as, you know, things like this that are breaking out, um, you know, that's increasing in volume, lower volume to the downside, increasing in volume. So right here, you can see it's breaking out a little bit uh, past this $15 range. It's not one that I would trade. Um, also, things like this, the AMRI kind of broke out. It's not holding very well because the market still takes it down, but you'll see if it holds it tomorrow. Uh, the problem is, is if it's pulling back um, towards the end of the day, it's showing some weakness. So it may come back under this line tomorrow because it's showing me weakness in that sense. And then also we got the um, Appy as well. This is what I mean by weakness. You got a gap here, the stock huge surge, and then it pulls back. Now this is a penny stock. It's not one that I trade, but again, just showing you what weakness. So. Getting back to what you would trade is things like the GLD, okay? Let's look at the weekly, okay? This is the weekly of the gold. Um, if you've been following me for a long time, then you know where I'm at with this gold, okay? This is where it is, right here. Had this line level of support for quite some time. 
and it's bouncing. Okay, it, we held it here in uh, of 2013 June July area of last year, and uh, now it's been bouncing for quite some time. Uh, so this shows me gold is getting a little more bullish. So we can get up to this uh, 13 137 level. And we'll see what happens there. It's, again, going up on lighter volume, nothing amazing, uh, but it is going up. That means that, you know, people are more interested in gold. If you're interested in, again, a different one, you got the uh, PSAU. Again, this week, higher. Look at this. Uh, similar here that uh, we're looking at gold here in this sense. So here, if we look at the daily... I like looking at the weekly with the gold because it's a little bit harder to spot on the daily. If you look at the weekly and, you know, pretend that you're going to hold it for multiple weeks, it's a lot better. it would be in a lot better position. So then you'll have to plan to hold it for a month or so. Okay, so here again, this one could get to that 2590 level or the 25 area. So again, it's another gold stock. If you look at the uh, TLT, which is the treasury bonds. Again, looking at the weekly, this is the line I'm watching. One, two, three, four, five, five levels it hits. If it breaks this, you will see it go much higher, much, much higher. And if it breaks this, you will see stocks going much lower uh, because I'm watching it and I'm seeing that it'll come up to here. And if bonds get up to here, Stocks are going down. Um, in either case, more than likely. Uh, but again, this one today, you can see huge bar, huge inflow, 10 million um, shares traded here. And uh, this is the level. Um, it does move slower, so you know, only up a dollar forty-four. But watching the weekly, you can see that it'll take multiple weeks to get up there. But that would mean it would take multiple weeks for stocks to sink and go lower. Now, if you're not interested in those precious metals, those other sectors or things to trade, then you can do some day trading on things like the SDS, which is the ultra short um, ETFs. But if you trade these, I would only hold these for the day. Never hold these overnight because they get recalibrated. Uh, they're a little more wild and they can really bounce and hurt you quite badly. So be careful when trading these. They don't move a lot, so you have to um, you have to get a lot more contracts than normally. Uh, but when they do move, you can see here we have a bullish engulfing pattern compared to what they normally move. You can see they don't move a lot, but like on days like today, we got a huge inflow. And the reason they're traded or people like trading them, the professionals is because you can get a lot of contracts and shares. Here we have 20, 19 million shares traded. So they're always heavily traded, so it's very easy liquidity and easy to get in and get out and very nice spreads. Um, same thing like with the SKF, this one, again, a bullish engulfing pattern. This one's not traded as much. This is the financials, but again, popping higher. This is the short financials. That means it goes up when the financials go down. You got things like the FAZ, 7.6 million um, shares traded. Again, bullish engulfing pattern. And this is the bear, which means, you know, it's sucking it in. Think about it. What happens in a bearish engulfing bar? This is a bullish engulfing bar on a bearish thing or a bearish uh, security. So what does that mean? That means that the bears are taking over a little bit. Okay. Uh, then we got the TZA. Okay. Same thing here. Almost had a bearish engulfing bar, but really a bullish engulfing bar on a bearish uh, security. So again, 19.1 million shares traded. Uh, and you got things like the EDZ. So if you need to find these, just look up uh, bear ETF uh, things. I'll probably put together a resource or something like that where you can get a lot of different things um, for these types of markets, events, things to watch for and things to trade during what happens during these types of markets. But in either case, I uh, hope you learned a lot from this video. I wanted to share with you some of those insights behind the current markets. Again, just remember that it can bounce tomorrow, uh, but it might roll over due to the Friday. So you have to kind of wait and see, but um, 
You know, nobody has a crystal ball. I don't have one. You know, you don't have one. You can't really predict the markets. All you can do is watch your risk and reward strategy. Trade according to your plan. And, uh, you know, there's some telltale signals that, you know, you see these coming. And I talked about it, that the market was going up on air. This light volume here um, all throughout this level. And then now we got a couple pops. So we got a pop, but it's to the downside. So what does that mean? It means we're a little more bearish than bullish. The market has been going up on light volume. So we'll see. Uh, maybe volume will pick up and it'll continue going to the upside. But uh, right now, I think it'll take some time to digest because take a look. We've got this bearish engulfing bar and uh, we'll see. We'll see if it gets down to here. Um, personally, like I said, I'd love it if it goes down 5,000, 10,000 points, but um, it just creates new opportunities. Just don't ride them down. That being said, have a great day. Um, I'll see you guys next week from my um, trading lab, and uh, I'll put on some new trading videos shortly. Looking to revamp the website. i um, been working on a book here while I've been on holidays. I'm taking easy, you know, uh, kind of like 100 uh, tips to uh, trading stocks. Uh, so I've been working a lot of new uh, good material and uh, some cool new projects to um, – take some trading to the next level along with some other business stuff. So thanks again. Uh, thanks for the fellowship. If you have some stocks you want me to check out or request, uh, just go ahead and send me a message through Twitter. That's probably usually the best way. Um, and I can do a review on it or I can share a chart with you and uh, show you some trend lines or something like that. And then you can trade it according to your plan. So, all right, have a great weekend. Enjoy and spend some time with your family and don't forget to do what you love, contribute to other people, and more importantly, live life to the fullest or abundantly. Thanks again.